If you want to grow muscle or get stronger, nothing is going to change how fast you can get there more than the quality of your training program, except for maybe how you take care of your basic nutrition. I'm going to tell you the three fundamentals you need to include when you're designing your own workout program to make sure you're progressing fast, avoiding plateaus, and actually training for your goals. Training to gain strength and training to gain muscle have a lot of overlap and will always come hand in hand, especially early in your training years, but how you prioritize one or the other will change what your program should look like for all of these fundamentals. My online programs are designed specifically with these in mind and let you choose between a growth, strength or mixed focus to help you take the trial and error out of your programming and reach your specific goals as fast as you can. Fundamental number one is exercise selection. If your main goal is strength, exercise selection is actually quite simple. Strength is actually not just determined by your muscle output, but is also a developed skill that you'll learn and get better at the more that you actually practice the movement you're trying to get stronger in. This means that for a strength program, most of your focus should be on performing the specific exercises that you're wanting to develop, whether that be pull-ups, pike push-ups, dips, planche holds, and so on. The rest of your exercises typically become what are called accessory exercises, which are there to help you further grow the muscles that you're using for your main exercises and fill in any gaps in your program. An example of what your week might look like for developing pull-up strength would be two or three days where you do pull-ups as your first or second exercise of the session and maybe mix up the variations a bit with some grip changes and then you throw in some rows and bicep curls on low bars or rings to target your back and biceps separately and get some more directed growth. For a muscle growth aka hypertrophy focused program, better exercises are generally going to be ones that allow for a decent range of motion so that you can get the benefits of stressing your muscle at a variety of lengths and exercises that are usually more stable so that you can train super close to failure without other stabilizing muscles or your nervous system fatiguing before your actual target muscle does. Good candidates here include push-ups, especially with your hands elevated for extra depth, pull-ups, ring flies, ring rows, ring curls, tricep skull crushes, assisted sissy squats and pistols, bridges, and hitting the like button on this video. The second biggest factor is your training intensity, which also ties into your rep ranges. Growing muscle is always going to be done best when taking your sets to failure, or at least within one to three reps of failure. Generally trying to avoid complete failure until your last set of an exercise is a good move, as you don't want to cause too much fatigue too early on, but it's also useful to go to complete failure on the first set when starting a new program, or every couple of months, to get an accurate idea of where failure actually is, because studies have shown we can be pretty bad at guessing this ourselves. You can have a lot of variety in your rep ranges, and still get great growth as long as you're right near failure, but I prefer to stay around the 5 to 8 ranges even for hypertrophy because this will still allow you to get enough reps to stimulate growth and get comfortably to failure, but won't be so high that it causes lots of unnecessary muscle damage and fatigue that increases how much recovery time you need. If you want more detail about ideal rep ranges, check out the video on my YouTube channel that goes over exactly that. For strength, your intensity has a bit more flexibility. Being close to failure will both stimulate strength and muscle gain still, but that extra rep or two before failure are a lot more fatiguing than the rest of your set. Because part of getting stronger is practicing the movement, we can actually get more practice in if we stay a bit further away from failure on each set and then use that energy that we've saved to perform more total sets. All these sets are still going to be quite intense though because when we're training for strength, we never want to pick a load or variation that we can do more than 6 or 7 reps max with, with all of our sets being mainly in the 2-5 to five range. Our accessory exercises are the exception here, and typically you'd pick some of those great isolated hypertrophy options and take these to failure for moderate to high reps after your main exercises are done. Research has shown that ideal rest times between sets for growth and strength are going to be at least 3 minutes or more, despite what's people might think about having short one minute rests for growing size. If you're doing heavy sets for strength or more fatiguing compound movements that use multiple joints and muscle groups at a time, you may even want to stretch this out a bit longer and if you're doing smaller muscle groups like biceps or calves and you're pushing for time, you're probably going to be okay with closer to two minutes. The last key variable in your programming is volume, which means the total number of reps and sets that you're doing. This is an important one to dial in because doing too much can actually be worse than doing too little, and not only can it actually slow down your progress, but can easily lead to injuries, which slow you down even more. For growth, it's the number of sets taken near failure that are going to matter, and research has shown that anywhere from around 8 to 25 sets per muscle group each week can be optimal. As more studies come out, many experts are coming to the opinion that if you can keep your intensity high, have proper rest times between sets, and pick good exercises, you should be able to maximize your growth by being on the lower end of this range and also minimize the risk of overtraining, so I find that aiming for around 8 to 12 sets per muscle per week is going to be optimal for most people. 
For compound exercises that use multiple muscle groups, I like to count each set as one for the main target muscle and half a set for secondary muscles. So a push up would be one for chest and 0.5 for triceps, while a pull up would be one for lats or back and 0.5 for biceps. Your volume for strength will depend on your intensity. So if you're pushing each set with 90 to 100% effort, then your volume is going to want to probably be similar to that hypertrophy range of about 8 to 12 sets per week. Like I said before though, if you can keep your sets closer to 70 to 80% max effort, actually build up a lot less fatigue by avoiding that last squeeze near failure, you're going to be able to fit in a lot more total sets. Your strength program could look like 10 to 15 sets per week on just each of your main lifts, then you can add a few extra sets of accessory exercises on top. There's always going to be some individuality in what volume suits you best depending on your intensity, exercise selection, diet and age, so you're always going to want to adjust based on whether or not you're able to continue progressing from week to week and how well your body feels like it's handling the stress of your workouts. Again, if you want to take the guesswork out of your workouts, feel free to check out my detailed calisthenics programs at jakewilliamsfit.com and give my channel a follow if you want more detailed training content.